I'm Zach George. If you really want to know how to train a dog from day one, you've hit the jackpot with this series. If you want to learn how to joyfully raise and train dogs, subscribe to my channel and click that thumbs up button. Meet Shade, Akane Corso, so raw in his training, he's essentially a blank canvas. Over the next few weeks, I have the task of teaching him to be the epitome of a well-behaved dog. We're gonna tackle those common puppy challenges, housebreaking, not so desirable to me. Teaching him how to focus and pay attention, mitigating problematic behaviors like biting and chewing. Yes, okay, that was great. Mastering leash etiquette, socialization, and so much more. In our last episode, you saw how we got Shade briefly acclimated to his new temporary living situation with us. He's only been with us for just a few hours. Let's resume our story. It is Shade's first night with me. I thought it might be a good idea to see how he responds to a light crate training session. This is gonna be my first night with Shade. As far as I know, he's never been introduced to a crate at all. Let's see if he puts two and two together. He's gonna toss some food in there. He seems to be gobbling it up. This is exactly what I was hoping for. The whole purpose of the crate is so that he has a place that he can feel secure, that's nice and safe for him. Kind of like a bedroom. You might notice that it's absolutely huge. My personal preference has always been to use large crates. I like oversized crates. When I'm doing crate training, it's vital that the dog enters on their own terms. If they don't willingly go in, it's time to look at different strategies. Good, okay, fine, so we'll go in and we'll go out. How about that? A lot of people will put their dog in a crate and then just close the door, but we want them to know, hey, you can come in and out. Like the harness before, we're trying to create this association with the crate. Make it fun, make him enthusiastic about participating in the activities that we want. So now I'm going for a little bit longer duration. I'm gonna close the door for a second. Gonna leave it open for a second. I'm gonna close it. He's doing a great job so far. Right now, we just wanna get him comfortable with it. I'm intentionally scattering his food about rather than just putting it in there so that he is encouraged to explore all aspects of the crate. Let's try an experiment here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and put another amount in there. Let me go ahead and close the crate. All right, a little anxiety there. Okay, good. Pacing like this in a confined area like a crate does signal a dog's heightened state of anxiety. This repetitive movement is a physiological response. See, as the stress builds, a dog's body is going to release hormones like adrenaline, for example, prompting some type of activity. So by pacing, the dog is attempting to channel this surging energy they're receiving because they're seeking relief from the discomfort. There are aversives in our dog's life naturally, even when we're training them and trying to avoid them. The point is we don't want to intentionally use aversive methods in our training. How do you all feel about crate training? Do you use a crate? Did you find it helpful? Or did your dog find it more stressful than not? Not every dog is cut out for crate training, if I'm being honest. He's a little hesitant since I closed it. I may have set myself back a little bit there. Hey, handsome. What's going on? Is he just full or does he not want to go in the crate? Let's see. Will he eat that? Oh, see, he'll eat it there. Now when it goes in the crate, he's like, I don't know. Sometimes it's really easy to move quickly with some dogs. Whereas with some dogs, having that door shut for just a few seconds wouldn't be a big deal for him. He was like, wait a minute. But this is part of just really getting to know each individual dog. I've got to learn what I can get away with and what I can't. I really don't want to end this training session on such a tense moment. So I do want to reach deeper. I want to see if I can motivate Shade to voluntarily re-enter the crate and see if I can rebuild his confidence and pick this up at another time. Maybe this will work. They're wise. My goal here isn't even necessarily to get him comfortable in there for the evening as much as it is, can I get a minute in there while he's chewing it? I think I'm gonna keep this chew extra valuable. I'm gonna keep this in my back pocket for tonight. So if he does become a bit restless, maybe it will pacify him. Will it work? I don't know. Undoubtedly, providing a young puppy like Shade with a chew such as this beef tendon offers immense value. I see him thinking about probably chewing on that wood. That makes a lot of sense. Puppies like to chew on things. So I think I am gonna go ahead and give him that chew right now. That's a turbo tendon chew. You know how I'm always saying be one step ahead of your dog? This is a good example. The turbo tendon is a hit and you can see quite literally how hopefully it's saving my furniture. 
And your dog could just as easily be chewing the furniture, but by having something that's desirable to chew on nearby, when you have a 14 week old puppy, don't assume they're not going to chew. They need to chew. Have chews of varying degrees of toughness and textures. Hopefully this chewing will keep him occupied until he becomes tired again at bedtime. It's just before bedtime and I'm trying to get him to go poop and he is not getting the idea that that's what I want him to do. And I'm hoping he'll do it before I go to sleep. I was outside for probably 15, 20 minutes and Shade didn't seem to have to relieve himself any further. Maybe he really doesn't have to go. I don't know if I've ever been successful in not having a dog sleep with me on the first night. It's getting darker, Shade's still conscious. Nightfall is upon us. It's so late, he hasn't pooped. He won't relax. So I'm just gonna let him chill here. Puppy training is all about picking your battles. He had such a good day, he's had so much going on. Will he settle down? Now my aim is to try to help him settle down and fall asleep so that he gets a good night's sleep. Shade's had a full day. He's likely had some stress happen to him throughout the day. My role is to do my best to ease that for his success. So he's shuffling around a little bit, but he seems just about ready to fall unconscious, which would be great. I'll take it. I've got to figure out how to get up and turn these lights off. He's such a loud snore. I didn't have to get up one time throughout the night and he has just been passed out. All right, you guys, I think we did it. He slept well, I still have to get him outside. Believe it or not, he went all night, didn't wake me up. He was absolutely perfect overnight. What a man, big stretch, hello. And now that I've let him out, he hasn't even peed yet. So far, he's just standing there and he doesn't want to move. And if I try to encourage him with even minor leash pressure, he's like, no. So that's something we need to work on to positively condition that. My goal is to see if I can just get his nose to the ground somehow. Maybe I can get him to sniff. Teaching Shade to be efficient during potty breaks, that would save both of us a lot of time outdoors. And right now, I, he's not even sniffing. I know dogs have to do that before they do their business. Guys, this might be the silliest thing, but I'm just going to try. All right, I've got some treats. I'm gonna break them up, kind of crumble them. I'm gonna throw them there. Okay, so now I've got his nose on the ground. Take his leash off. Maybe by scattering treats and encouraging him to sniff the ground, I can subtly guide those sniffing instincts. The hope is that once he's engaged in sniffing those treats on the ground, he might naturally transition into doing his business. It is an out of the box approach. The reason sniffing is such an essential behavior for dogs before they relieve themselves is because it really allows them to engage with their environment. And this sensory stimulation really facilitates the natural reflexes needed to go pee and poop. Wild, isn't it? So he's eating the crumbs. It looks like it worked to at least get his nose on the ground for a second. You sniff the ground and then you go pee. Yep, keep doing that. All right, we got a pee, it's happening. What was your first night like with your dog or multiple dogs? Tell me everything below. In my first real training session, we're going to establish the meaning of the word yes, setting the foundation for not only his basics, but for advanced training in the future too. This is going to unlock remarkable possibilities. Mastering basic skills, refining his leash walking skills. I mean, he's gonna be massive. Continuing to curtail behaviors like unwanted chewing and jumping and nurturing his social interactions with other dogs. These are all big priorities of mine. Click thumbs up. Make Make sure you're subscribed. What'd you like about this episode? What do you want to see more of? Tell me in the comments below.